Okay, two people asked me where I work. Where do you work and what's your day job? I do not do computer stuff for a living. I am a firefighter with East Naples Fire Department. I've been uh, a firefighter with them for just over nine years now. Um, when did you start using Linux? Um, I started using Linux um, probably about eight years ago. I think it was around 2005. Um, shortly after I started with the fire department. When I started with them, I was still on Windows, uh, but probably within the first year I started using Linux. Um, and the way that I started using it was um, I had heard of it in the past and I had tried it here and there, but every time I started to use it, it's like I would get frustrated going, oh, I just need to do this and I know how to do it in Windows and I don't have time to, to relearn how to do it. So finally one day I said, I am going to use Linux for the next two weeks. I am not going to use Windows. If I need to accomplish something, I'm going to figure out how to do it in Linux. I am not going to go back to Windows for two weeks. And by the end of two weeks, I decided I am not going back to Windows. Uh, I figured out how to do pretty much everything I needed to do in Linux. And I learned a lot along the way and realized that once I learned how to do it, most of the things I needed to do were easier in Linux. So definitely, you know, definitely be prepared to try new things. Um, be open to, to open source. Uh, you know, give Linux a chance. Don't go, oh, because I can't figure out how to do it, it can't do it, because I hear that so much. Oh, Linux can't do this, open source can't do that. And there's very, very little that I have found that it can't do. And the only reason it can't do is because someone hasn't done it yet, and maybe you could be that person. Um, so yeah, after two weeks, the only thing I still use Windows for was video editing, because uh, I, uh, at the time, was doing wedding vi videos on the side. Um, and I just needed video editors. Really the only thing available back then was Scenarella, which I did some tutorials on, and I eventually did uh, get comfortable with that enough to use it, and I did a few weddings with Scenarella. Um, and at that point, and if you look around now, there are a lot of video editors that popped up for Linux um, that are open source. Um, at the time, uh, probably, or even now, Caden Live and OpenShot are probably the two um, ones, big ones that come to mind. Besides Blender, which is good for little clips but not full video editing, um, like a full movie or whatever. Um, and Caden Live at the time was touchy. Cinerella, I never really had crash on me. It was a little awkward using before until I learned how to use it and I'm sure if I want to use it now it'd feel weird again because I just it, it was different. Caden Live, um, very unstable for the first year, year and a half. Then it became very stable and now they've been adding more and more features and pretty much everything that I can think of that I could or would do video editing wise in Windows with I used to use uh, uh, Adobe Premiere, I used Adobe After Effects a little bit uh, by the end, I really liked Sony Vegas, and uh, I used uh, 3D Studio Max for, for effects and, uh, and 3D stuff. Um, everything that I would do with those programs, I can do with Caden Live or Blender. Um, so, eventually, after a year to two years doing everything in Linux except for video editing, I finally was able, we got to the point where I could do stuff, and now I have no problem. Uh, you know, I still hear people saying, you know, arguments of uh, Photoshop versus GIMP or, you know, video editing in, window, or in Linux compared to video editing in Windows. It's like, I'm sure there are some things that, like, Photoshop can do that GIMP can. I'm sure there's some things that GIMP can do that Photoshop can't. Same with Caden Live versus something like Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere. Um, I do feel like we're still lacking a little bit in, like, the After Effects area. Blender can handle, can do a lot of what uh, After, probably everything After Effects can do. It's just After Effects. I do, I mean, I'll admit that uh, from what I've seen as far as video tutorials and After Effects and then trying to do the same thing in Blender, I'm like, I could do that, but it's going to take a lot more work than in After Effects. So, so definitely, definitely, you know, if you need, once again, I always say if there's the only time that it's really acceptable, if you ask me, to use proprietary closed source software is when there is no um, usable uh, open source alternative. Um, but in reality, it, it, people will argue, once again, Photoshop versus GIMP. 
It's like 99.99% of what you are doing in Photoshop can be done in GIMP. Um, I, the only thing I can think of that I've used to do in, uh, in Photoshop that GIMP doesn't have is the record feature where I could do a bunch of stuff to one photo and record those steps and then say take all these photos and do the same thing to it. GIMP has batch stuff where I can say okay adjust all the brightness and contrast to all these photos like this. It's not quite the same as the record feature so if you really really need that record feature yeah you're going to need Photoshop but really uh, most of the time if you're, you're uh, you know, a photographer you try to avoid I think uh, just using mass settings like that because you want to tweak each photo individually and once again most of what you're going to use is going to be there in GIMP. The only reason you feel like it's not is because you you haven't used it enough and you're comfortable with GIMP or Wind, uh, Photoshop. Just like it took me a while to switch to Linux because I kept going, well I know how to do this in Windows, I know how to do this in Windows. It's like just because I don't know how to do it in Linux, just because I don't know how to do it in GIMP doesn't mean it can't do it. And uh, it aggravates me when people say that. So, um, And you're not as limited. You can put GIMP or Linux on a flash drive, bring it with you anywhere. Legally, you can't do that with Windows and Photoshop. Anyway, moving on to the next question, why did you start using Linux? Curiosity, partially. Um, I was also, at the time, thinking, I know at one point, like, oh, it'd be really cool to make a video game um, system. And I was like, how would I make my own system? And obviously, you know, if you were to use Windows, you'd have to pay all the licensee fee. I was like, I keep hearing this Linux thing. It was, I had, first time I had touched Linux was probably um, like 98, 99. My buddy Austin had installed it on his machine, and I played with it with him for like 10 minutes. It's like, oh, that's neat, but I'm using Windows. Um, so it's mostly, mostly curiosity. Uh, next question is... Uh, uh, favorite video game. My favorite video game uh, has been for how many years now? Uh, I guess it'd be like 18 years now. Wow, I'm old. Um, is Original Doom uh, and by id Software. I, I loved it back then. Really, it was one of the big things that got me into kind of programming because even though now Doom is open source. Back then it wasn't, but you still had tools to modify every aspect of the game. How things worked, you know, how they reacted. You can build your own levels, put in your own textures, make your own characters, put in your own sounds. And I used to do that all the time. In fact, back, uh, back in the mid-90s, probably like 95, 96, I spent $300 on a little black and white feed-through scanner. And the main reason I wanted it was I wanted to take pictures of my friends, scan them into the computer, and put them in the game. I would actually scan in these photos. They would be black and white because it was a black and white scanner. I'd bring them into Adobe Photo Deluxe, which was like a dumbed-down version of Photoshop at the time, and I would hand color them using like a highlighter tool or whatever, and then put them in the game and have my friends walk around. Um, so I think a lot of my curiosity and creativity uh, when it comes to, to computers was due to Doom. And even though obviously graphics and stuff have gotten way better since then, just the feel and the nostalgia and just the atmosphere of Doom is something I've always loved. Um, and the fact that it's now open source, even though the art and stuff is still uh, proprietary and or a copyright of uh, uh, there is still it's still my favorite game. My wife and I play it together all the time. Um, when it comes to Doom 1 versus Doom 2, which were basically the same game, but uh, Doom 2 had uh, more bad guys and textures uh, and obviously different levels. As far as gameplay, I still prefer, I, I would vote Doom 1 over Doom 2 for one main reason, is I feel like um, Doom 2, uh, they purposely made the levels a whole lot darker to try to make the game harder. There, I feel like in Doom 2 there's some levels that are completely black, 
like no lights at all, just trying to make it difficult for you. And I feel like you miss out on the scenery, on, on the wall textures and how they build the levels. Now, as far as editing, definitely I would go with Doom 2 because there's already more characters and textures in there for you to modify. But definitely original Doom. I am not much of a gamer. Um, it's like games bore me, but for 15, 18 years now, I could play Doom all the time and still love it and have a great time. Did you go to college? Not for any computer stuff and really not, not in general. Uh, once again, I am a firefighter. I, uh, I'm also an EMT, which I had to take a semester of EMT class at the local college. And I've also taken a few firefighter courses, um, you know, as, a, as for pump ops and engineering, uh, you know, engineering as far as driving a, a fire truck. Um, and the only class I actually took at the college was the EMT. The other ones were given by my department, but I'm pretty sure I got college credit for them. So did I actually go to college? Not really other than one or two classes. Never went there for a degree, just certifications. Um, and uh, I personally, uh, I'm not going to go off too much on this, but I'm not a big fan of the way school systems are run. Um, and although there are definitely some job fields where I feel like, Obviously, you need to go to college. Like, if you're going to be a doctor, obviously, you'd want to go to college. But I feel like school nowadays is so much more about stretching it out and making you learn all this nonsense just to make the class long enough so they can charge you more. Um, and I just don't like it. I, I also learn better, I think. I think I've learned more from YouTube videos like uh, Vsauce and Vertassium, Vertassium, I think that's the name of the channel, uh, and Minute Physics. I think I've learned more from them in the last two years than I did the four years I was in high school, probably my whole, you know, school career. Um, I just learned better from those because they kind of get to the point. This is this, they make it entertaining, not we're going to drag this on. And there's a lot of other things I don't like about the school system. So definitely, I mean, college is good for certain things, but I think a majority of people, I think, uh, uh, if it's, you know, either a trade school, getting some sort of certificate, uh, you know, just like uh, to become a firefighter, I had to go through the fire academy, which at the time, once again, it's been almost 10 years since I went through. Uh, actually, it has been 10 years because I went through in 2003. Um, the, it was a 480-hour class. Uh, I did it over a six-month period, just three days a week. Uh, there are other places where you can do it, and it's different from state to state and obviously other countries. Um, but I went through and it was class on exactly, you know, the career I want to be into. I didn't have to go through four, six, eight years of school. It was 480 hours and then passing uh, state tests. And even within that, there was a lot of stuff that was just BS. Um, it's like you learn all this book stuff that you don't actually do in the real world and they just kind of teach you. Some of it's interesting, some of it's good to know, but a lot of it is just stuff. It's like, oh, interesting, but I'm not going to actually use that in real life. And uh, so I don't have any plans on going to college. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to take any classes that, I, that aren't required by work. And as a firefighter, we do have classes. We have constant training, either classes at work or they assign us a lot of online courses where we have to go through a course and take a test. And we do that pretty much every other week. Um, so definitely, education is definitely a good thing. i just uh, not big a fan of the current school system, at least here in the U.S. I don't know about other places. So anyway, that's it for the questions today. I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, feel free to ask questions and comments below, and I hope that you have a great day.